my heart, my heart adores you. My heart is glad to say the words, you are holy, Lord. Santo, Santo, Santo. Mi corazón te adora, mi corazón te sabe decir, Santo Rey Señor. Holy, 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 my heart. My heart is glad to say the words, you are holy, Lord. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. I'm Sarah Schofield, lead chaplain for the University of Wolverhampton's multi-faith chaplaincy and a priest in the Church of England's Diocese of Lichfield. Along with Muslim, Sikh and Christian colleagues, I minister within a diverse academic community of over 25,000 people. Over the past year, the university has nurtured online community from Freshers' Week film nights to PhD vivas. Chaplaincy has been no exception, with prayer, pastoral care and shared lining all moved online. Now as our four campuses are gradually opening up, we will take much of what we've learnt into our return to campus. Moving online has broadened the range of students we support. We've realised that our old model requiring students to come to us has much to gain from our online model. Our building offers a place to find and create community. Lockdown has shown us that the internet can do the same. When on campus, we don't host regular Sunday services. Instead, we encourage students to make and sustain relationships with local churches. The witnesses of Christian staff and students within the university and friendly churches close to campus are vital to our chaplaincy. This service, therefore, is led by a mixture of students, staff and representatives of churches close to our Walsall and Wolverhampton campuses. As we come to you to receive the food of your holy word, take your truth planted deep in us, shape and fashion us in your likeness, that the light of Christ might be seen. Cause our eyes 
grasp the heights of your plans for us Truths unchanged from the dawn of time That will echo down through eternity And by grace we'll stand on your promises And by faith we'll walk as you walk with us Speak, O oh Lord, till your church is built And the earth is filled with your glory And by grace we'll stand on your promises And by faith we'll walk as you walk with us Speak, O oh Lord, till your church is built and the earth is filled with your glory. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you fill us with the living bread. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hi everyone, my name is Esther Shanubara and I'm the Diversity Officer at the University of Wolverhampton Student Union. So a few weeks ago, I got asked to do this video answering the question, what does my faith mean to me? And I remember thinking, that's a really big question. Like, how does one even begin to explain something so beautifully intertwined and complex, yet so simple? So I thought I'd give it a shot by telling a summary of my story. You see, whenever I say my life's a story told by grace, it's a phrase that has so much depth rooted in so much beauty and love, it takes a thousand lifetimes to explain it. I've sat in different places in my room, just thinking and reflecting on my life. And I've come to a realisation that I've literally struggled with my mental health for as long as I can remember. From a little girl who hid in little corners during playtime at nursery to this fully grown woman in her 20s. I remember the first time the thought of suicide crossed my mind. I can never forget that day. I thought of the words people had said to me. Then I thought of my grandma and my mum and this fear creeped in my heart and I turned around and ran away. I just couldn't do that to them. I didn't even realise what had happened back then. I just went to class like nothing had happened. A year and a half later, I was out of that school and moved countries. And I thought, that was it. Finally, my long-awaited fresh start. How ironic, though. <laughs> Things only got worse. The biggest and longest April Fool's moment ever. Trust me. You see, where I come from all those years ago, and even now, mental health isn't really a thing. Depression, anxiety, suicide, PMDD... There were labels that were non-existent for a black African girl who's not only from a Christian background, but her parents were also pastors. When my grandma passed in 2014, it was like someone had dropped an atomic bomb in my life and imploded everything holding me together. I lost my religion. I just raged. I have no words to describe the pain through the years. All I remember was I lost the masks I used to hide my pain in the explosion. Every hurtful, negative thing ever, sp ever spoken over me had physically manifested and become chains that physically bound me. Self-harm, binging, therapy, pills, nothing worked. <laughs> nothing healed me. All I can say is I know for a fact that someone out there was holding me back from taking my life. The summer of 2015, I found God the Father. 
And I say it like that because I'd never known God as a father. I spent six years in a seminary and never met him. How ironic is that? I learned about his heart and that he actually loves and cares about me, that he didn't care about religion, that he cared about me and wanted to heal my heart. You know the hurricane of a girl who everyone kept away from, from like a plague? Yeah, that one. I learned that he deeply loved that girl and he wanted a relationship with her. It took me two years to accept that someone so good and holy and perfect could love someone the complete opposite of him. It was this constant battle until 2017. But long story short, after locking myself up for days in my union room, I got a phone call that landed me in a room, in front of a room filled with about 300 people in absolute crippling fear, pain and tears. I don't know how my legs found their way to that spot, but I'll be forever grateful that they did. I needed God to be real in that moment to speak, and he did. I'm here. I've got you. I'm never letting go. I'll never forget the burning feeling in my ear that came with that voice and those words. He gave me permission to be broken. In that moment, I lived out the verse that says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, who rescues those who are crushed in spirit. That was the moment God stepped into my mess of a life and flooded it with love and grace. My life was transformed by those very words, I've got you and I'm never letting go. I can't tell you things got better because they didn't. But if you know the love and purest of joys that has consumed me every day from that very moment, I've come out stronger from whatever life has thrown at me. And that's because of the promise God made to me that night. He said he'll never leave or forsake me, and truly he's never left me. He's never let me fight on my own, and even when he's silent, he's there. And on days when I have no fight left in me, he lets me hide under his wings and rest. He sings words of love and peace over me every day and every night. His unfailing love has never let me slip away. Through life, I am very loved. I am favoured, I am forgiven, way more than I could ever deserve and tell you. Because Jesus took away all my past and gave me a new identity rooted in love, in him. There's There's a whole lot more, but it's incomprehensibly indescribable. So if I'm ever banging on about Jesus' love, don't blame me. I'm just so eager for you to experience life from this perspective. I wish for you to feel the love, pure joy, peace and goodness that I get to live every day. And that's why I go on about God. It's just a beautiful love not to share it. I initially wrote this summary in tears because I lived my story. And my heart cries every day knowing that there are millions of people that feel unloved and fight their own battles on their own. I guess all I really want to say is God loves you. Yes, you. Whether you believe in him or not, he'll never stop loving you. You're his child. So, I guess to me, my faith means life to the fullest, secured in the deepest and truest of loves. Thank you for listening. A reading from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. Then the angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and he went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He'd come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he replied, How can I? Unless someone guides me. And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with the scripture, he proclaimed the good news about Jesus. 
As they came along the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch asked, Look, there is water. What is to prevent me from being baptised? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went into the water, and Philip baptised him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went away rejoicing. But Philip found himself in Azotus, and, he, and as he was pa passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be not far from me. John chapter 15 verse 1 to 8. I am the true vine, my father is the vine grower, who removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
As a chaplain without a church building, almost all my work depends on conversation. I love this element of my ministry. And because of that, today's passage from Acts fascinates me with its conversation between two strangers. The story contains so many of the elements of the community life of a university and the life of a chaplain. The characters within the story are motivated to go somewhere new. At least one of them feels called there by God. People arriving at university often do so out of a sense of vocation, hoping for something to change within their lives. At open days and in welcome weeks, I speak to students for whom coming to university has been part of their Christian calling, looking forward to the day when they expect to graduate into a new life. Chaplains ourselves are on a journey, which we feel is prompted by God. After the initial excitement of any call, whether like Philip to share the gospel, or like the Ethiopian in our story, to seek God in prayer and instruction, calling will lead to the wilderness. For many people, this is a prolonged experience. For others, it is brief, but it is all too common. The excitement and fulfillment of going where we think we should be, only to feel that we have arrived in the wilderness. I see this at university all the time, whether people have arrived to teach or to learn. At some point, and especially this year, they find themselves on a wilderness road. What are the elements in this conversation that enable two strangers from such different backgrounds, one Ethiopian, one Palestinian, one high-ranking government official, the other part of a religious sect, the followers of Jesus, increasingly in trouble with the law, to create a conversation space in which God is so transformatively encountered. There is no thunder or lightning, no great drama, just a simple conversation. In the intimacy of a conversation, God is found. As a chaplain, two themes stand out for me, invitation and hospitality. Philip waits to share his good news. He could have preached unbidden. He could have stood at the roadside using a rock as a pulpit, guessing at the questions he thinks need answering. But he doesn't. Instead, in this wilderness, Philip waits. Philip invites the Ethiopian into a conversation with a question. The Ethiopian, in turn, invites Philip to sit with him in his chariot, he offers hospitality. Together they talk. A good chaplain always remembers that they are a guest. Chaplains operate on someone else's ground, in someone else's online space. Unlike a church, chaplaincy contexts like buses, online university inductions, railway stations, Zoom town council meetings, are not places that people attend expecting to hear a sermon. All these spaces can be wildernesses, and conversations offered and hospitality provided is all the more precious in a wilderness. As I attend to exchanges about faith online and in person, I sometimes notice people focusing on the point they think they need to make, rather than the relationship they need to build. In this wilderness, the Ethiopian clearly had questions about Jesus. He has been to Jerusalem to pray, implying he already has a sense of the importance of God in his life. Philip's not taking God to him. Philip is following God. And crucially, he is open to the Ethiopian's leading. He is question-led. He is on the Ethiopian's ground. And whilst he remains there, we can assume he has done nothing to overstep his welcome. When the Ethiopian finally, suddenly asks for baptism, Philip doesn't say, just hang on, I need to tell you some more stuff. Can I just check that you've understood the precise detail of my talk? Could you take this exam? He simply responds to the question for baptism. 
Philip trusts to God and his newly baptised conversation partner to take matters forward from there. Powerfully for me as a chaplain, Philip, just like so many chaplains, after one conversation is out of the Ethiopian's life forever, with no idea what happens next. Church tradition understands this as the arrival of Christianity in Ethiopia. Chapter 21 of Acts tells us that Philip goes on to raise four daughters as prophets. It is unlikely that either man knew what happened after their wilderness road adventure. God prompts the encounter. God moves the story on, with both men going on separate journeys. The lens through which the warmth of God is felt is conversation. Conversations about God don't need church buildings. The last year has reinforced what St Paul's letters to the early church first showed. We don't need to be in the same physical space. Good and godly conversations need an attitude of heart and mind, not a roof. Wilderness places need deep conversations about God, whether they're a university bar or a Twitter exchange. We are guests and we are hosts, simultaneously, with much to offer and much to receive. What is your calling as a godly conversation partner? How do you invite others into conversation with you? How do you invite God into your conversation? Spoken? Signed? Written? Online? In person? Maybe a mix of all of these. God calls us to find the spaces where we can share the questions and answers we have found on our wilderness roads and learn from the wisdom of others following Christ onto and along their wilderness roads. As the story shows, with the right ingredients, the prompting of the spirit to begin a dialogue, openness of heart, a willingness to learn, people who have the gift of being good hosts and good guests. Transforming conversations can take place in wilderness places between total strangers. In every encounter, trusting that God will take forward the story of faith, however brief these conversations between strangers may be. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, for whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. During this time of prayer, we're going to use hand gestures to involve our bodies as well as our minds in this time of praying for ourselves and for others. If you're able, you're welcome to join in at home. And I'm just going to show to you the hand gestures that different people from churches around our university campuses will be using as part of their prayers. We'll begin our prayers in a moment with hands together in the traditional way of praying for many Christians. After this, Joe from St Matthew's Church in Walsall will pray for situations of violence, conflict and anger, making the sign of a fist. He'll then pray for situations of brokenness. And whilst he does this, he'll show Jesus' wounded hand, illustrating this with the index finger of one hand 
pushed into the palm of another. Navi from the Eden Project in Wolverhampton will then open her hands to pray for us all to be open to God and to share our resources with those who need them. Dr Abigail, one of our lecturers and a member of Tabernacle Baptist Church, will then clasp her hands together as if holding the hand of someone to pray for those who are sick or dying or bereaved. And after that prayer, she'll return our hands together and lead us in the prayer that Jesus taught us. So we begin with our hands together as we come towards God in prayer. Pray, Lord, that in this time of prayer and worship, we might know you. We pray for community wherever people find it, online, in churches, at university, at work. We pray for families, however and wherever we find something we know to be family. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. God of justice, we pray for all those who live in fear of violence, anger and hatred. For victims of violence of, of all kinds, regime, criminal, societal, domestic, emotional. Loving God, we pray that you console them. Not only that, we pray that you give them a voice and a safe haven to speak against those things and people that do violence against them. I pray that your church can be a place of safety for all people, regardless of their background or belief. And I pray that your church can lift up that voice and be an advocate for peace and love. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. I pray that you restore friendship and instill in the hearts of your creatures the gift of trust and readiness to forgive. God, we pray for our society, for its structures and for its people, for all those ways in which we are founded on greed and division. I pray for your transformational spirit to enter in, for all those ways that we don't honour your creation, human or otherwise, and we don't give it the dignity it deserves. I pray that you would convict us and show us what it is to love. For all those times, that we place our own drive and our own ambition above love of our neighbour. Teach us humility and show us the value of community. For all of those ways that we are complicit with structures of oppression, whether we know it or not, God, open our eyes. Forgive us and help us to repent so that we can live out your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. Lord, in your mercy receive our prayer. I'm just going to pray uh, for those who are struggling emotionally, physically and spiritually um, and they um, may need us to share with them. Father, I just pray for those who are struggling emotionally. Lord, I pray that God, will you help them, Father? With those who are struggling emotionally um, with mental health, Lord, I pray that God, would you come and renew their hope, their love for you, Father? I pray that God, would you come and transform their lives, Lord? I pray those who are struggling spiritually, Lord, I pray that, Father, may the God of hope touch them wherever they are. Father, I pray that those who are struggling, Father God, would know the light of God. Lord, would you use us as believers, Father God, to reach out into the world around us and be, Father, those who, who share the light, the hope of Jesus in the world around us. Lord, I pray for opportunities to do that, Lord, that we would be people who would go out and pray for those who are struggling, that, Father, that those who are struggling spiritually or emotionally, Lord, that, Father God, you would reach them in supernatural ways as a way to um, symbolize that we're going to receive the good things from God. If you just put your hands out in front of you and just lean them forward to receive from the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us your son, Jesus Christ, as our high priest. 
who sympathize with our weaknesses and has been touched in every way that we are, yet was without sin. Lord, we know that you desire that we may prosper and that we are healthy in our body and be strong in our spirit. The Lord among us are those people suffering in body, mind, and or spirit. Dear compassionate and loving Jesus, we pray for such in our community who are currently experiencing such painful brokenness. We pray that, Lord, you may, they may find health and complete recovery. Their son of righteousness, please with you arise with your healing touch in your wings and make known your healing power to them. May they know your healing touch which brings an end to several years of sufferings, knowing that with you all things are possible. Even so, their Lord, would you dispel fears, handle all anxiety, and cause your peace and prosperity to come in abundance. Lord, please unite their bodies with your blessings of healing, joy, life, and strength. Father, may those with painful conditions know your blessings in their body and your sufficient grace. May they hear your voice and accept your guidance. May their body be moved to the place of your peace and love. We pray for those dying at this hour. Dear Lord, now would you please create them close to you and cause pain to melt into the comfort of your presence. Would you envelop them, Lord, with your loving care? Lord, we pray for those who are bereaved. The Lord, you will bless them as they mourn. Lord, please carry them through in their, in their sadness and pain. May they know your comfort and consolation. Help them, Lord, to face each new day with renewed hope and assurance in the good that their beloved has given. Give them, O oh Lord, a heart of rest, comfort, and consolation. Father, we pray that you will help families to unite and hold each other in the comfort of love at this moment. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you now and forever. Amen. Amen.